Western Europe in turmoil. While the Byzantine Empire survived as a center of classical culture, important changes were taking place in Western Europe. Historians sometimes refer to this period of history from the fall of Rome in 476 AD to the 1400s as the Middle Ages or medieval period, the period between ancient and modern times. The Barbarian Invasions. Beyond Rome's frontiers lived Germanic tribes like the Goths, Vandals, Lombards, Burgundians, and Franks. The Romans considered these peoples to be uncivilized barbarians. The Romans considered anyone to be a barbarian who came from a foreign, non-Roman culture. In the fourth century, a warlike tribe known as the Huns moved from Central Asia to Europe. As the Huns moved into Europe, they forced the Germanic tribes to move westward. These Germanic tribes, in turn, pushed forward into the Roman Empire. The Visigoths were permitted by the Romans to enter the empire to escape the Huns. Later, the Visigoths turned against the Romans. The Visigoths defeated the Roman army and sacked the city of Rome in 410 CE. They were assisted in defeating the Romans by the many Germanic slaves inside the city. After a period of invasions, Germanic tribes then established their own kingdoms in many parts of the former Roman Empire. The Angles and Saxons invaded England, the Visigoths moved westward to Spain, the Lombards occupied northern Italy, and the Franks took Gaul, present-day France. The constant warfare of this period disrupted trade across Europe. Travel became unsafe because of violence. Bridges and roads fell into disrepair. Cities and towns were abandoned. Bandits roamed freely. Life became increasingly rural and unsafe. Wealthy families moved out of towns to the safety of fortified homes in the countryside. People gave up their interest in learning. Shortages of food and goods grew. Churches and monasteries became the only places where people could read and write. The Rise of the Franks The Franks established the largest of the new Germanic kingdoms in what is now France. Charles Martel, a powerful nobleman, helped unite the Franks. In 732, at the Battle of Tours, Martel stopped the advance of Islam from Spain into France. In 751, his son, Pepin, seized power and became king of the Franks. With the support of the Pope, Pepin marched across the Alps and took control of northern Italy. Frankish kings created a powerful army by granting lands to their nobles in exchange for service in the king's army with their knights. The Reign of Charlemagne Pepin's son, Charlemagne, became king in 768. Charlemagne expanded the practice of giving land to his nobles in exchange for their promises of loyalty and service. At the same time, his nobles gave land to their knights in exchange for similar promises. Peasants gave up their rights to their local lords for better security. They offered services in kind, providing firewood, livestock, and crops. Charlemagne enlarged his kingdom to include France, Germany, Holland, Belgium, and Northern Italy. Charlemagne established a new capital in Aachen, which he turned into a center of learning. He constructed a beautiful palace in imitation of the imperial court of Rome. He used riches from his conquests to attract scholars to his palace school for children of the nobility. At the request of the Pope, Charlemagne was crowned Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire in 800. This step announced to the world that Western Europe was now independent from the Byzantine Emperor. The coronation of Charlemagne also signified the new political and religious unity of Western Europe under the concept of Christendom. After Charlemagne's death, his empire was divided among his sons. Europe faces new threats. The division of Charlemagne's empire occurred just as Europeans were facing new threats. From the east, Slavs and Magyars invaded the lands of Germany, France, and Italy. From North Africa, Muslims attacked southern Italy. The greatest threat came from the Vikings, fierce warriors and sailors from Scandinavia in northern Europe. They sailed south in search of trade, loot, and land. Between 800 and 1000, the Vikings launched repeated assaults on the coasts of Western Europe, often committing brutal atrocities. Although spreading fear and destruction, the Vikings also created new trade routes. 
Their long boats were easy to maneuver and could sail in heavy seas or close to the land. In many places, they created new settlements, such as the Donalau in northern England, Normandy in France, and their own communities on the island of Sicily. Let's consider what we've learned. How did the collapse of central authority have continuing effects on Western Europe? Feudal society, 800 to 1400. To protect themselves from violence and to provide for basic economic needs, people throughout Western Europe adopted the system introduced by the Franks. Kings offered nobles a grant of land, known as a feud or fief, in exchange for loyalty and service. The nobleman, known as the vassal, gave homage, allegiance, to the king. This new order, known as feudalism, helped people survive the breakdown of central government and order. Feudalism in Europe was characterized by a number of key social, political, and economic relationships. Social. A major characteristic of feudal society was the development of a strict class structure based on the control of land and military power. People born as serfs, knights, or lords could not change their social position. Local lords, or nobles, were given land by their rulers in exchange for military service. These lords had their own small armies of knights, armed warriors on horseback. Political. Under the feudal system, the leading nobles controlled political life. They built large castles for their own protection, often rivaling those of the king in size. They surrounded themselves with armed knights. The king relied on his nobles for his own army, and the nobles often fought among themselves or challenged the king's authority. Civil wars were frequent, and powerful nobles often grabbed land for themselves. Economic. During feudalism, most people lived on manors. A manor consisted of the lord's house and the peasants living in the surrounding territory. This aspect of the feudal system is also sometimes known as manorialism. Each manor produced its own food, clothing, and shelter. Manors varied in size, depending on their lord's wealth. Every noble had at least one manor, but some powerful or wealthy nobles had many manors. For example, in England, there were more than 9,000 manors. Peasant farmers, known as serfs, gave their lord part of their harvest in return for the use of land and other services. The lord protected the serfs from attacks by outsiders. Each lord had almost complete power over the serfs who lived on his manor. The lord could pass laws, require labor, and act as a judge. Serfs were bound to the land and had no voice in most matters. Farming in the Middle Ages Farmers lacked specific knowledge of how to enrich the soil or rotate crops. Each year, only two-thirds of the land was usually cultivated, letting the other third remain fallow, or uncultivated, so that it could recover its fertility. This was known as the three-field system. One field was devoted to winter crops, a second to summer crops, and a third lay fallow each year. Farm animals were often small. Bad weather and a poor harvest could lead to famine and death. For example, during the Great Famine of 1315 to 1322, large numbers of people across Europe died. Peasant Lifestyles Peasant farmers produced the food used by medieval society. Most workers long, most worked long hours to grow enough food to survive each year. Although most peasants were farmers, some were millers, blacksmiths, and tavern owners. Life revolved around the agrarian calendar. Most of the time was spent working the land. Church feasts marked sowing and reaping days. Peasants lived in small towns or nearby farms on their lord's manor. A typical peasant home was a two-room cottage with walls of dried mud, plastered branches, and straw. The cottage often had a roof of thatch. Rooms had earthen floors and a few furnishings, such as a stool, table, and a chest to hold clothes. Stacks of straw served as beds for the entire family. Water was drawn from a nearby well or stream. Ventilation was poor. Pigs and other farm animals often lived inside the house. Women in the Middle Ages. During the Middle Ages, the role of women was determined by the attitudes of the Catholic Church and the nobility. Women were supposed to be obedient to men. Women's inferior status was often blamed on the biblical story of Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. 
Medieval people lived in extended families. Nobles maintained large households. Related peasants lived close to one another. Women of all social classes gave birth to a large number of children, but many children died in infancy. Women's lifestyles varied according to their social status. Noble women spent most of their time in prayer and in domestic chores such as sewing and embroidery. Among the nobility, only a handful of women received an education. Among the peasants, a close partnership often existed between a husband and wife. Both worked side by side in the fields. Women ran the home and looked after the livestock.